what you wind up seeing before I get this presentation is you wind up seeing that the markets basically self-adjust. And you wind up seeing properties that are older properties being offered at uh, lower prices. And when I say older properties, I'm talking about price properties that are now considered secondary offerings that have had people living in them uh, as opposed to properties that are just coming up or properties like this where we have an opportunity to finally unleash a few of the units that have never been you know, uh, occupied before. So we're looking at a market that is at this moment adjusting. I've seen some things come into the secondary market um, below, I would say probably um, about 5% below where they're offering uh, new, um, new condominiums. Uh, some of them as much as 7 to 8 percent, depending upon the location. Uh, we're talking about properties that are built around 2010 uh, to 2012. Um, but, and, and overall, um, the one most important factor is what do you do in a situation where you bought something at a higher price and it's come in? Well, if you wind up being in the condominium market, you wind up having the opportunity to rent out your units. And in that case, you're basically supporting your investment by having a cash flow coming in at a constant rate. And that cash flow, depending upon, again, where you are located in the city, could be anywhere from 1.5% as high as 5%. Uh, what we're going to present here tonight are the remaining seven units that are available in this building. Um, and they are all on the 56 penthouse floor. Uh, at the end, William will discuss those in particular and how this one developer has instituted incentives that will allow that to become a very attractive item at this particular time in comparison to the other, and I'm going to call them four additional properties here that are or have attracted uh, the most press in the last uh, year and a half. So if I could present, uh, begin this, I want to first of all say good evening to everyone and welcome to the W Downtown Residences. My name is Nolan Meyerson, and I'm a real estate broker representing Commerce Real Estate here in New York City. We are meeting tonight at the W because we represent the remaining sponsor units of this amazing development, which stands at the center of the new downtown area. It rises to the height of 56 stories, and on the 56th floor, it is the architecturally designed penthouse residences by the renowned firm of Guatham A. Siegel, that we will tour at the conclusion of these presentations tonight. We will discuss the environment for continued investment opportunities in New York City real estate market, despite tight monetary controls instituted by the government of China, and as Leslie pointed out, a new American president whose agenda we still do not know regarding foreign affairs. We will cover the years 2014 through 2016, and is our hope upon conclusion of this time together that you have a clear understanding of what the benefits are that continue to exist here in New York City, and in particular, the new downtown area. So in order for us to move forward, we have to take a look back at where we came. I think it's very important that we acknowledge the incredible contributions that they who came to the table early enough to participate in this great expansion and reimagination has meant this development. Uh, that being said, we'll take a brief look back. Real estate in New York City witnessed a monumental run from 2003 to 2006. Rising from the ashes of 9-11, a new sense of pride was gripping the nation, and the epicenter of most of these activities was actually located right here at the tip of Manhattan, affectionately dubbed FIDI, short for the Financial District. Developers, sensing an opportunity to purchase distressed properties, scooped up tens of thousands of square feet of office space with plans to convert a large portion of them into condominium units, thus replacing business attire with backpacks and baby strollers. While the concept of condominium living has been around since the 1960s, and the investment uh, this real estate is an investment vehicle decades earlier, a new group came to the table ready to place overseas <coughs> funds into New York City real estate holdings, and that would be the foreign investor. For reasons that can better be explained on a practical and personal level, New York City development and the foreign, uh, the overseas investor became the perfect marriage by which New York City uh, eventually grew. 
and the new downtown in particular. Once the financial subprime loan disaster of 2007 and 8 had abated, those projects, and including the beginning of this one, uh, which have been stalled or avoided, witnessed a tremendous resurgence, and thanks to the foresight of overseas investors, so contract signings approached 2006 levels. Those who were fortunate enough to get in early potentially realized 25 to 40% return of their investment. Today, we've just begun to see what overseas investors has meant to the market to New York City. But since we are discussing this at the W downtown, let's take a look at what it's meant to the financial district. Two new schools have sprung up uh, in, in response to the needs of the growing family community. While Midtown has been the shopping hub of the world with hot couture retailers lining fashionable Fifth Avenue, we now see the same uh, designers showing their latest creations in all weather venues such as Brookfield and Westfield shopping malls right here in Fide uh, on the majestic Hudson under the watchful eye of the Statue of Liberty. Um, not to be outdone, the Oculus Center opened last spring with more international brands and a huge transportation hub connecting Fidei to the lights of Broadway and the wonders of the outer boroughs. What I'm trying to focus on is the fact that our location is really, where this building is, is the best location for being downtown because you're basically two blocks away from everything. Touching briefly on our new president, one doesn't have to look much further than Riverside Boulevard on the Upper West Side, 56th Street in Midtown Manhattan, or on Wall Street in the new downtown to realize that there is one thing that this president cares about, and that is real estate. And as Leslie touched on the jobs and the money coming in from EV5, while real estate investment from overseas funds hardly contributes to the coffers of our, of our government, as long as the demand continues, the residual benefits will come in the form of more jobs in the construction industry and the prospects of more housing for a workforce that requires market-rate apartments that can be rented. So thank you all for participating in this great growing economy. As the influx of foreign investment increased at almost an insatiable pace, we saw the rise of the ultra-lux market in changing the name from 57th Street to Billionaire Row, pricing out all but the top one-tenth of one percent. And in a way, it brought clarity to foreign investors and a harsh dose of reality to others. Pricing for the mass market, excuse me, cannot go straight up. And so it is true for the very wealthy. Property for those who can afford it has, has now entered the realm of art, with address and floor height going to the highest bidder. But when is enough too much? For some, never. For most, it came in September of 2016. From the lofty heights, we've seen the ultra-lux market come off 15 to 25 percent. You want numbers. Below 10 million, 7 to 12 percent. In the three to five million dollar range, or four to six percent. In the two to two million six range, or three to five percent. And under two million dollars, which would be the sweet spot of the market, selling either at list or slightly down, maybe two and a half percent. So, in other words, we're talking about another buying opportunity has just raised its head. While chaos can produce buying opportunities in times of stress, as we saw during the financial crisis, it's the forward-thinking developer that keeps the engine running during the good times by creating demand at key price points. Developers listen to what you want and to stay competitive adjust their pricing schedules to ensure a reasonable rate of return, i.e. cap rate. If the market for the foreign investor can no longer sustain demand, what can a developer do to ensure that demand continues? To learn how one developer has addressed this issue, I'm going to turn the podium over now to my partner, Mr. William Stafford IV, to present the opportunities that exist here at the W Downtown Residences. <coughs> Mr. Stafford. 